Hello everyone, welcome to another weekly market review. It is the 29th of March 2021 and I have a big announcement for you. Subverto is going private. Yes, we are moving private. It has been an absolute pleasure and a delight to provide good value, free content for you over the last couple of years. But for me, I am at a crossroads in my life where either I have to relocate to a more crypto friendly country or build a business outside of the country where I reside, which is related to cryptocurrencies. And this is something that now I have an incentive to do because I do love where I live and there is a lot of work that I need to do here. So, you know, I don't want to leave and this encourages me to build something of great value to you guys. And, and you know, also we have um, Tay, you know, is a brilliant technician and there is a lot of alpha that he has to share but of course you know we can't just start giving away um, all of our edges like that to the public you know so we would prefer if we end up building a tighter group of people and you know we, we want to empower you and we want this to manifest into a community of absolutely brilliant technicians who can use what we have to offer to be able to, you know, not only compound all this uh, great capital that we are accumulating in cryptocurrencies, but also to be able to preserve it and, you know, together explore the new frontiers of opportunities that lie before us. We also have a couple of more brilliant people who are going to be part of this project and you probably know them through the Discord, but we will introduce them to you formally when we make this announcement over the next two or three days. So stay tuned. We start with the total market cap on the monthly, very close to the end of the month. And you can see what a brilliant six months this has been, you know, essentially, if you look at it, um, you know, the last time we had a lot of consecutive price action in a similar way we came close to getting pretty impulsive you know and the the log is on so you, you can actually see and you can actually compare what was happening and just for a second this is something that i haven't completely looked at either just looking at the performance of the previous cycle I mean, this is another debate and this is something a lot of brilliant minds are talking about whether this asset and this asset class has become big enough to, you know, start to negate these 80 and 90 percent drawdown cycles. I myself considering the kind of market flow and the uh, exchange of coins we are seeing at these current levels feel that, you know, this is something that is a probability and really depends on how much upside and what kind of uh, method does price end up moving up you know because if it gets um, way too stretched and too impulsive there will always be a potential for downside but if we actually stair step and continue to move the way that we have it is potentially possible that you know this is the initial impulse of what could be you know an an actual up only phase for this market you know where people just become digital natives and continue to remain so so here's the previous performance for the past cycle you know it's 37000 percent from bottom to top but you know you want to look at it right from the bottom where uh, you know you want to count out the wicks it is still about 26,000%. Uh, currently from the March bottom, we are at about 1600%, you know. So if if it had to be an impulse like bubble territory, still more than a 10x, you know, even if we not supposed to get a similar kind of return as last time. So there is still immense potential for what might be coming in 2021. But of course, now with massive, massive capital and all the big companies in the US getting into this market, 
it's going to be a very different dynamic and i feel anyway that this is one of the most technically adept markets you know which is starting to get even more and more complex there are so many added dynamics you know it's absolutely beautiful and completely brilliant you know how this is working it's, it's, it's such a delight to be a part of this situation so for now let's look at the four hour and you can see this is a big level the six hour level which had been holding price down we failed to hold this as support and currently we've made one big impulse above this so what i would say is for at least the total market cap we're very close to making all-time highs there is something uh, along with the uh, what bitcoin can do that shows me that you know there is potential for us to sweep these highs we are getting pretty close to that you know so let's see uh, if we are able to do that get a move potentially to the channel top or at least a sweep of these highs and then build another structure the, uh, then build another structure and essentially if this this entire structure becomes similar to a structure like this you know or a structure like this you know this is just on a higher time frame if it ends up being a ramp we could start to get another impulse and essentially this is something that i'm looking for but for that you know potentially if we could get to the top of this channel you know get to the top of this channel create some kind of a um, false breakout come back down here you know this would be then technically the level to hold if we can build a move like this um this six hour level to flip into support would be very very significant it would have confluence with some vwap bands as well so a uh, move like this would be very apt but also uh, structurally you know brilliant and especially if it can be another violent move because this is something i've told you before guys you know in bull markets if we get violent moves to the downside um, a lot of times it completely shifts sentiment you know it shifts sentiment and a lot of sentiment reset is required you know to support price and to be able to move it the way it needs to you know so i would be in favor of a scenario like this and for me currently this would now become the level the six hour level would be the level to reclaim because you can see how major this level was you know essentially we held it as support 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 we, this is a deviation and you know we're back above it so it would be very apt if we can because we never came down to you know retest it and confirm it as support so something like this would be very apt and if it is that you know there is even a more bullish scenario then what i would want is for price to structure out higher possibly find support at a higher price zone and then be looking for price to exit this so this i mean for me currently the way the market is placed it is slightly lower probability but you know this is something to look out for later and uh, outside of that in terms of a bearish scenario um, pretty difficult to find right now but essentially if the support that we just confirmed you know you, this was resistance 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 broke it came back down we have tested it as support now if you remember uh, the previous recorded review this was the actual point of negation for me you know i would try to find essentially i might have that drawing let me just look at the brushes so there is potential possibility well i don't i guess i don't have it anymore but anyways this was the actual level of negation because you know when we've just confirmed it as support so if you're looking for downside i think this is the actual level now that has to break down but for now i think you know the market has proved itself the way a lot of coins have been moving you know this is a very nice and clean v-shaped reversal so 
a move like this to sweep um, and head to the channel top come back down here this would essentially for me be the last significant opportunity before price starts to get impulsive again we have been in a consolidation for you know more than a month and a half now so this is uh, very healthy for price and you'll be getting to the phase where tech generally in april does end up getting bullish so you know lines up very well with uh extreme bullish scenarios so the altcoin market cap again very clean structures you know what you can see is that we had a couple of nice consolidations a 40 day consolidation 25 day consolidation similar nature to the consolidations if you can see you know just just look at it it's quite fractalish you know we had a bit of a structure quick impulse a bit of a structure quick impulse strong move down you know decimating sentiment and then you know a very quick move back up from there you know a quick move back up from there initial sell off you know full retrace you get another sell off it was you know looking uh, very fractalish if we end up getting here and getting another sell off on the other hand if this was the sell off that you know was the complete shakeout because you know for altcoins a lot of essentially defi coins um, you know many of the larger caps this push down which looks like this on the altcoin market cap you know for the defi market cap it came down much deeper you know so if this is the kind of sell-off we could get a scenario like this you know where we just get a bit of a grind nothing very extreme you know just a bit of a grind and we grind up but essentially this is the level around 7 12 7 15 uh, the flipping of this channel is what we would be looking at for that impulsive move out of here you know because over i would say over the next 10 10 days i'm looking for that impulse guys between the first and second week of april looking for that impulse out of here i'd say that these two are very very good examples of what could potentially happen these previous two consolidations either we can get up here and really just grind about and you know shake out as many people and of course if somebody missed this move up it's pretty complex to you know get up here but the other other way price can move is that we get up here you know and people are really adding on to the leverage and waiting for that potential breakout and then you know to decimate them once more before going but this is essentially what we did here so it really depends upon how degenerate the people get bidding up here you know so um very nice examples of potentially the two scenarios that could take place for not only the altcoin market cap but for crypto itself bitcoin this is the chart that i have been working with and uh, essentially uh, we had a couple of potential scenarios got slightly front run on this one you know because we didn't come back down to test these these levels but essentially what 54k ended up holding and we have breaking broken up from the middle of the channel very attractive to the upside what we have is these equal highs up here you know so for me a very nice scenario would be if we can sweep these equal highs and, you know get a potential move back you know down essentially to test uh, uh, this viva band around 52 53k if we can get something like that or uh, potentially hold the top of this channel you know we'll have to depending on where this goes we'll have to pull out uh, pull out the fibs and see if we can get something like that and essentially get you know either a 0.5 or a gp retrace with some more confluence down here but this feels like a good scenario you know to take out these equalize up here very very attractive level and if we are really bullish 
you know prices really end and ends up getting supported at the mid channel here continues to grind so again for bitcoin similar scenarios to what i discussed for the total total two chart you know the altcoin market cap chart you get a uh, move up you know post potentially start if we do end up starting to grind in a bear flag kind of a uh, situation then i would be potentially looking to slightly devious can you know look to catch another dip you know but if we start to just get few shake outs up here you know start to get a bit of a bearish vibe and a sentiment right up here then it is potentially possible that we can just grind and move up so similar to altcoin market cap these are the couple of scenarios in terms of levels this is very very clean level to the upside and for the downside i would say that it is still about 53k you know this would be the basically this uh, av web band so just seems like a great level of support if price does need to come back down here the chart for defi against btc you know this is something we've been looking at and essentially just very cleanly in a range and, uh, i think this would really define what would potentially happen is 55 days i think we are now 57 days of uh, sideways you know yet to confirm direction you know we i don't think we should be overly confident of either direction you know when price is moving like this yes seasonality you know suggest april and may to be a really nice time for not only bitcoin but all coins as well but you know we really need to allow price to confirm it you know you can play usd charts there've been some brilliant plays in small cap alts you know that's another thing with the you know having a smaller group those are the kind of setups that can be you know even shared when there's a few of us but doing that in a public group with you know so much capital sloshing around i don't think it is very wise so I, a lot of times you will not see me shilling something that is too illiquid but anyway but for now still very much in a consolidation still no confirmation of direction you know yeah, make no mistake this can still break uh, to the downside you know this can still catch people off guard and break to the downside uh that kind of a potential scenario what it would involve essentially is a very violent move for btc you know rather than this stair step it could be a violent move because what we getting since feb you can see it's it's a bit of a seesaw you know once btc is uh, you know bottoming out the impulse is stronger for altcoins and you know moves like that but essentially what uh another way this could happen is that if btc really makes a strong impulse you know people are overexposed to alts people are caught off guard and you know this continues to bleed down you know probably find support down here and once btc actually tops out for something like a mid term top or something and you know we're consolidating there that's when you get the big impulse for alts against btc personally i am convinced either of these two scenarios will still bring out very significant returns potentially for altcoins so this is something to keep in mind and you know just know you know this is a, still a very much a consolidation which is unconfirmed you know so to absolutely have no exposure to the potential scenario that this can break down i do not think it's very wise you know i would say once we do end up breaking up any way the move would be so violent it would be a, a very good breakout play you know be so good to have alerts for a breakout play like this because essentially you could still at least get a retest and and then a move up you know so there will always be time to really add on to the capital so you don't need to be like underexposed but you know if you're overexposed 
just know you know there's been a lot of scenarios and a lot of uh, times where bitcoin has moved on its own and you know the crowd is over exposed to alts and everybody really suffers because you know they're losing bitcoin you know they're losing value till eventually you know they do end up getting that move if you're hodling but it, it can be difficult psychologically so you know when a market is in such a consolidation it makes sense that you know you are not favoring either direction until it's confirmed you can have a bias you know that you can be going long down here and still have exposure for potential upside you know you can do you can play out scenarios like that but you know just to be completely all in and you know not consider that there is potential for price to uh, for all btc pairs to move down south from this consolidation i think that is naive you know market always punishes those who are naive and always uh, rewards those who are well prepared you know so we just be prepared for this scenario and wait for that confirmation for all btc there is large caps against btc and you know these are scenarios we were looking at potentially holding this very critical and significant support level up here and you know currently i mean ethereum is showing some kind of strength against bitcoin you know and showing signs that potentially could have bottomed out that is why on the dip you saw that i was pretty interested in going long ethereum but yet again very similar to defi we are not confirmed you know and this is the high that made the low you know we have not built a higher high even so if you're looking for a trend or looking for any kind of a long term trend uh, i mean initially essentially this is uh, still in a sideways potential you know on any higher time frame and we do need that breakout either what we can get is this potential head and shoulders looking pattern which we could eventually break out from the thing is i mean just the thing to understand is that you know guys btc has just become so valuable you know that a full blown all season i mean we, we really have to consider and you know we really have to delve into how a scenario like that can play out you know and whether a scenario like that can play out considering um this narrative of a super cycle and of up only because for now this just looks very sophisticated you know in terms of a market you know this doesn't look like a trending market at all so these are basically older large caps as well you know so this has your monero and uh, litecoin you know stellar so it has a lot of the older coins it has i mean i could essentially update it but if you see the value you know it it is really shifting in a very um uh, uh, sophisticated manner how we had a march of uh, for nfts you know then essentially a lot of sector strength small caps doing well you know so the market is finding little niches a uh, way to make more btc you know but uh, the old large caps essentially you dying if you're holding them for a trade against bitcoin alone you can be holding them and you can be trading them individually because there are certain coins which move a certain way you know and if you're used to that and you can you can trade that but if you're trading these against btc you can just see since 2019 this is just a dead rubber you know this is just some place which does not need that much attention we had what like a more than a one year range which broke down confirmed i mean we failed to reclaim it a couple of times already now so you know price first needs to start reclaiming this range up here you know breaking out of this level to confirm some kind of trend way then you can start really pile in capital and get excited but until then just know what is happening you know and why it's happening and what these dynamics are you know and focus on the individual charts focus currently i have, i would say on small caps essentially and bsc the coins down there 
you know because outside of that if you're looking for btc trades there's not so many that look too inviting you know it is small caps even if you're just trading leverage ftx just being long the small cap index has been quite fruitful so there's something that needs to be looked at and there's something that needs to be understood you know about the market currently and uh, uh, just stay savvy till y you get confirmation guys and play the chart for what it is quick look at some on-chain metrics and what we're looking at is essentially the printing the most in interesting is the usdc printing of course this is usdt eth you know the teleprinting and this is something i sh i asserted at the beginning of february we had that massive print and you know just look at the move that followed it so of course price is following money but if we look at the 2021 stats for usdc you know visa has just announced it's going to be you know processing usdc transactions but just look at this for 2021 this is about almost three complete months you know nearly 200 percent which means 3x the times for its market cap you know so this is becoming significant guys because if i am correct uh, tether is close to about 40 billion in in its market cap and usdc has already hit 10 billion you know we were less than five you we about three and a half billion at the starting of 2021 you know so this is really really parabolic i mean essentially the thing is the primary impulse of this expansion of capital it is still being held you know over a time of three months so if you were to look at this on any kind of higher time frame this is just straight up you know this is steeper than um, btc's climb currently you know so very very interesting how this development is taking place it is steeper than usdd eth of course um, usdd is having different kinds of prints but you know a lot of focus on usdc how that is becoming the preferred uh, you know method for institutions and really tracking this is what is showing it and for now i mean if you look at it on a macro scale it is from 4 billion to 10 billion you know just think about the macro scale just think about how much m money is actually getting printed in these stimuluses you know they're, they're promising even more stimuluses how much money is actually getting printed and how dwarfed this is in comparison to that this is six billion that's nothing you know so just just know and understand these mechanics and just look at how price is following these mechanics you know so it's very clean we know supply is just dwindling so at some point it is potentially possible that we could get that impulse but what you also have to know is the the multiples that have taken place you know so for so many people who have been a lot of the ogs who have been selling the guys who've been holding bitcoin three cycles four cycles they're not selling their entire stacks you know they're just selling s small amounts which are very insignificant in today's world you know but that massive massive exchange is happening here this huge amount of printing is going on uh, it's really really difficult to find a bearish case when you know the underlying mechanics of an asset and an asset class are the way they are so very interesting i see a lot of people debating whether on-chain metrics work or not i think all that is complete rubbish you've been following me you know in real time i mean i know people who are taking low time frame trades based on on-chain metrics you know so and there is edge here there is alpha over here and those who have to doubt it maybe they haven't found a uh, setup and fair play to them you know they have their own edges but uh, very significant in this market to be able to have these on-chain metrics with us.
for the traditional markets we're looking at the wix and you can see the wix has been holding support i mean this is uh, i mean 20 wix um, it is commonly known you know I mean, this is basically where this is basically the line that divides significant fear and volatility you know so you go go from a high volatility range back to a low volatility uh, scenario and essentially what happens once we have low volatility it's nothing i mean you're still getting similar kinds of growth but you know it is much more manageable and your extreme downsides and extreme upsides are negated but you know what we need the wix to do is essentially start trading below 20 and have low volatility for a few weeks you can see in 29 uh, in 2009 once we got that sell off below 20 price started to consolidate you can see the, the sell off after that was what you know what what became the safe place for the next next move up for the next trade up look at it uh, in the sell off before from 2000 you had the sell off price started to trend up once we started to you know trade below 20 for a, a few weeks the the next sell off gave you a very good trade for upside potential you know so for now i don't think there is anything different we need for the wicks to start trading below 20 for a couple of weeks eventually we do get some kind of a sell off you know and you can get a rise above 20 back up again but once we have traded below this line of extreme fear you know we do know that the the macro factors that affect price towards extreme downside will start to get negated and you know you do get a safer long term entry for potentially you know big move i think you know a lot of people have forgotten if you have just scroll back to the youtube and just look at the macro video i put out in august of 2020 i think it was the end of august you know so you can just scroll back and watch that video it will give you a perspective of you know what higher time frames uh, we are looking at and you know what we're looking at for the next five to six years this is the second year for the bull market essentially if we're looking at what what we do get you know in previous years uh, you get absolutely outstanding returns in the first year slightly subdued but still positive uh, returns and also you do get a significant pullback so if we do end up getting a significant pullback this would be the kind of pullback to be looking for for a long-term placement you know for you know a potential long-term safe trade but still we do get subdued returns um, there are sometimes where second year returns have outpaced at the beginning of bull markets you know but uh, this is essentially it's the pullback that we would be more interested in and looking for continuation based on what we have you know over the last 40 to 50 years so good data to support potential continuation in traditional market tech outperforms but you know uh, spring is a good time for stocks as well all the rebalancing profit taking of march is over new positions have to be taken from uh, you know large capital generally it leads to potential upside you can see since 1950 past 20 years past 10 years and post election years all have positive net positive one to two percent returns for april so it's very significant for us you know to build out a strategy not only for crypto but for traditional markets you know looking for potential entries for upside uh, if you're looking at synthetics there's nothing more inviting than this trade tech against financials the momentum is pretty strong downwards you know you can look for uh, some kind of a structure but this is so clean you know previous all-time high breakout and a retest already for potential continuation you know and 
I mentioned it before, Jan, Feb, March is slightly subdued for tech, you know, or uh, April is the month, you know, for for tech. That's when we really get a recovery historically. Um, it's it's a very good time. So let's see if this structure down here you can look at it. It's very low time frames, but what you want to see is a break of this. Um, 4.7, 4.8, and then find some kind of structure. But essentially, consolidating at what should potentially be a retest of support, you know, a retest of previous resistance, which should now flip into support. So it's a. This is a great. This this possibly my favorite synthetic, right now. So tech should be something that should be looked at. Also, we got that massive, massive liquidation. In Asia, it's all over Twitter. I'm sure you know about it. Um, this Korean prop firm, you know, absolute degen, um, trading about 20 billion at four to five x leverage. So so significant that we've got that sell off on very good companies. You know, so high value when there's so much liquidity provided at very low prices. So I think. Tech is the sector to look for over the next uh, couple of months. Also lines up very well with crypto. Here's another very nice synthetic with very similar setup as tech against value, uh, as tech against finance. And you know, this is growth against value. And a similar thing, we have a breakout and a retest of previous all time high from 2009. So if this just does end up holding capital should flow back into growth also this would suggest that growth and then tech essentially then that means big tech would be something that ends up leading the market again if this ends up holding true and becomes a retest and we get continuation for commodities we're looking at copper right now this is a trade i recommended all the way in september and october essentially we had brilliant channel and a really good reclaim setup over here and you can see we made a really really powerful move it's not very usual for copper unless it gets a markup you can see you know from 2003 to about 2006 we had a major bull market in copper you know it, this could be the inception of something similar where we leave the entire range behind you know wherein price starts to grind up and move up out of here so in terms of significant levels, I would say this big quarterly level that we have broken up out of, you know, uh, in January and we're consolidating above in February it becomes a great place to end up finding a significant level to manage risk. And just look at it right here, you know, where we got this retest, you know, essentially this level has held up if price does end up coming here and retesting it or holding one of these two this or the quarterly level depending on the kind of interaction we get it would be another place to manage risk and find that potential move for further upside in copper if you found this video helpful please give it a thumbs up and go ahead and share it with someone else and if you have any questions about what we covered today please leave them in the comments and i will be sure to get back to you or answer them in my next video for more trading content and education, go ahead and click on the video on your right. Thanks for watching guys and cheers.